Hey, GW coming to you live once again. Look, it's raining outside, so you're going to hear all that mess. Hear that? Yeah, it's raining. It's about, I don't know, 5 6 o'clock in the morning. We just got slammed with rain. However, <clears throat> I did check out Halloween Kills, and it's streaming live on Peacock. You can also go to the theater. I believe it was out in the theater yesterday. Check it out. But if you are going to go to the theater, or if you haven't checked it out on Peacock, I'm going to tell you just a little bit about my thoughts on the film, and I'm not going to try to give much away. Uh, first of all, as everybody does know, uh, Jamie Lee Curtis is back as Laurie Strode. This film takes place right after the Halloween that was out two years ago. Two, three, two, three years ago, whatever. The one Danny McBride did the screenplay with. So don't get it confused. This is not another, you know, reimagining. This is a continuation. So it takes place right after Laurie Strode escapes the uh, her house, which she set on fire at the end of the last movie. And it picks up from there. Now, there is more of a mob mentality in this film. And one of the things that... I think people may or may not be upset with is that some people that I was talking to during work and maybe you guys out there too maybe you guys think that this film that's on Peacock now is supposed to be the end of it there is one more movie and they are filming it they filmed the second and the third entry back to back so don't get it twisted you know, there is going to be another entry, so if you have any doubts or what, what the hell, I thought they were supposed to end it, it's going to end next year with Halloween Ends. So, just putting that out there. The one thing that I thought was pretty interesting in the film, very early on we get a flashback to the John Carpenter 1978 version, which was the first film in this particular franchise because you go from the first film the 1978 one to the one Danny McBride penned the screenplay with which is the one where they pick up Laurie Strode as a survivor she has a family and her whole house, her whole home is like a fortress then this one Halloween 2 3 4 5 6 the curse of Michael Myers Halloween 20 years later all those do not exist if you follow this timeline. So again, I just wanted to point that out because people will be like, well, this doesn't fit, this doesn't fit, whatever. But anyway, back to my thoughts. So this film does take place and it does flash back to 1978 with uh, Sheriff Brackett and his encounter with Michael Myers, who I don't believe, whose encounter with Michael Myers, and I do not believe that was shown until this film came out. So it's interesting to see the same characters or not Sheriff Brackett. I can't think of the guy's name. But anyway, they do this really awesome thing about two minutes into the movie, two, three minutes into the movie, maybe four minutes, even five minute tops where they do have Donald Pleasance in the film in a scene, which I don't believe we did see in the 1978 you know, John Carpenter, Deborah Hill picture. So it's pretty interesting to see a recurring character, you know, CGI brought back to life. And it's pretty awesome. Um, the story, as you would imagine, as I just mentioned, is a mob mentality fit, sort of slasher, which meant, you know, Michael's deeds now have a, have captured the entire town. So he cannot go anywhere. He cannot do anything after a couple of killings without the whole town, you know, becoming a lynch mob type thing. One of the things that I thought was pretty awesome, too, is they brought Anthony Michael Hall back to play Tommy Doyle. Tommy Doyle was the one of the kids that Jamie Lee Curtis's character, Laurie Strode, was babysitting in the 1978 version. So it's cool to see him all grown up and ready to to jump in action so to speak the kills are phenomenal if you're if you love you know wicked death scenes you're gonna love this um there was a scene early on in the in the movie where 
Michael takes out about five people, and it's pretty awesome. And uh, like I said, the kills are well done. Very graphic, very quick. It's sort of a blink and you miss it gore effect. A lot of violence in this movie. But you know what was interesting was that there was hardly any. I think there was only two or three F words in the whole film. And that was kind of surprising because, you know, they just toned down the, the profanity a little bit, but they amped up the violence, so to speak. A lot of splattery effects, and it was really cool. The movie moved pretty much at a quick pace once it got going. The only thing is, is that it jumps back a little bit from present day back to 1978, you know, with this one character. So... Interestingly enough, if you can follow the timeline, you know, it's pretty awesome. So there will be another one, Halloween Ends. It's supposed to come out next year. But, uh, yeah, if you haven't seen it on Peacock yet, you guys need to watch this. And uh, do yourself a favor. If you haven't seen the Danny McBride scream, the one a couple years ago, the most current Halloween movie, watch it, then watch this one right afterward, and you'll have an epic pretty much half a day slasher experience and that's the way i would do it of course i didn't do it i just watched halloween kills but uh yeah definitely check it out also if you are interested you can actually pre-order this bad boy from amazon i checked it because i am going to get a copy and it is on there and of course they say you know blu-ray 4k dvd date unknown so basically pre-order it and you're guaranteed a copy and if you don't know how to pre-order, just go in there, click pre-order. It'll give you the full price of the, the item. What they'll do is they'll hold a dollar from your uh, from your credit card or bank account or whatever. And then they'll charge you the X amount for whatever ships. So definitely check that out. And I just wanted to give you my thoughts. I thought it was a fun slasher movie. And uh, if you're not doing anything tonight and you do have Peacock, check it out if you're a horror fan. But uh, that's basically all I got. You know, I just wanted to share my thoughts on it. I would go into more of the core story, but I do not want to ruin it for you. But uh, again, you know, Jamie Lee Curtis is very, very much awesome as, the, as in the role of Laurie Strode. And I think that, you know... She's going to be remembered when her career is over and she's retired or she passed away, God forbid. She's going to be remembered for this role. And she's also going to be remembered for one of the strongest female leads, I think, in a horror franchise. And it's going to be phenomenal. But I really hope she makes a couple more of these movies because I really enjoy her. I also, you know, think she's an awesome actress. She can do anything from horror to you know some comedy like in the movie true lies and she can do pretty much anything so definitely check out halloween kills i really enjoyed it i am kind of curious to see where they're going to go from here and how they're going to end the franchise but of course you know things won't stay dead on the upside of horror franchises just speaking Victor Miller has won the Friday the 13th lawsuit, which means projects and, you know, TV shows, movies, and everything else can move forward. However, that might not happen for a long time because Sean Cunningham has the, has a time frame to appeal this. Now, if this gets appealed, this might drag out in court for another two, three, four years. Which I'm really hoping not, because as a horror fan, you know, I'm kind of sick of the lawsuit. At this point, it doesn't matter who's in control of the franchise. We just want films back. We want to see Jason back. We want to see, you know, Crystal Lake. We want to see some crossovers like they did with Freddy and Jason. You know, we want to see comic books. We want to see more video games. Because you can really stretch this out. The problem is, is this lawsuit has held everything up. To the point where it's ridiculous. The only thing that I think was released during the lawsuit was the Blu-ray set that Shout Factory or Scream Factory put out. You know, 
and it had a ton of extras and it was great. But, you know, we, we all want to see, you know, more movies. And one of the best movies that I think they should do first was to have, to have a Tommy Jarvis versus Jason movie. And I want to see it done. But the lawsuit is over for now. But if Sean Cunningham starts an appeal, we're looking at, you know, God knows how long until this franchise is out. Also, trailers have been popping up for Scream 5. I don't know how I feel about this movie because Scream was always one of those ones I never took seriously. But uh, it is something to watch for. Uh, Nev Campbell, David Arquette, you know, they're back. And uh, it's going to be interesting to see how this film plays out. Because Scream was one of those ones that came about, and it was huge. And I never gave it the time of day, really. I enjoyed it, but I never. it was not one of my favorites. So it's going to be interesting to see how they amp up the violence, you know, and the story, where they're going to take it from, from here. So definitely check that out. Also, Don't Breathe number two. You can buy early access on Amazon Prime. Although I would wait for the Blu-ray because Don't Breathe 1 was great. I heard Don't Breathe 2 sort of drags in spots. And again, I'll have to check that out. But uh, as far as the Halloween lineup, <clears throat> I think we got all kinds of stuff going on here. You know, still waiting for the new Texas Chainsaw Massacre to drop on Netflix. Checking that out. Also, if you have Paramount Plus, check out A Quiet Place 2. It's a new release. And I have a feeling, too, with peacock buying the halloween franchise they might put more movies on there more streaming movies on there exclusively kind of like hbo did hbo max did speaking of hbo max let me go right to this saw the many saints in newark here i really enjoyed that film although a lot of people are probably going to have a misconception about this film and think it's primarily about young tony soprano growing up and becoming a mob boss fact of the matter is Tony Soprano is in the film played by his son his real life son James Gand Gandolfini's son the movie deals more with the family than it does with Tony Tony's just an offshoot character and one of the interesting things about that is we get to meet Uncle Junior you know we get to see uh Silvio you know the dude with the f messed up haircut you know my wife likes him a little bit and his mannerisms are the same in there. But it has to do with Dickie Maltesante and all that. And this this film takes place, I think, a few months before Christopher Maltesante is born. Michael Perioli's character in that. So definitely check that out. Um, it's a good... It, it rivals sort of like The Godfather slash Mean Streets slash Goodfellas. It's along those lines. Um... And it never tries to push, you know, the fact that, you know, it's all about Tony Soprano. It's about the whole entire family. And I, it was pretty awesome. And I can't wait to get the Blu-ray of that. There was some good shootout sequences in that. Overall, I felt, found the film to be very cool, very violent, very epic, you know. But... Like I said, a lot of people are just going to say, hey, this movie's all about young Tony Soprano, which he's in the movie. Now, I'll give you an example. You remember Carmela Edie Falco's character on there? She's in it for roughly five seconds. So, the movie is not really about Tony Soprano. It's about what Tony Soprano grew up around. And, uh... His love and infatuation for his uncle Dickie, who ran a crime syndicate family. Dickie Maltesante. He was referenced many, many times in The Sopranos. So, I just want to make it clear because people might be disappointed half they go into that film thinking it's about Tony Soprano and they're going to see some epic climax. But the film was amazing. I'm not taking anything away from that. So, if you haven't had a chance... Definitely watch The Many Saints in Newark. I really, really enjoyed it. And I would say if you watch this, then jump into The Sopranos is the way to go. Now, 
The only thing that's kind of interesting, too, is David Chase did write a scene with Edie Falco's character in it, you know, to sort of reference the series, and it was cut. And I think Chase was being smart here by cutting the scene because it all it does two things. One, it focuses it with the with the omission of the scene, it focuses more on what's going on and it was a scene that from all intents and purposes wasn't needed. It was just a throwback to the series. Number two, what what the omission of the scene does is it actually lets you believe that what happened in the final episode of The Sopranos actually happened. That Tony, Meadow, Carmella, and AJ have all been gunned down in the diner in the, in the members only episode. So it 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 sort of like does not throw something out there that might not be true. And I could spend a whole video on The Sopranos ending, but I'm saying that right now, Without the scene, the film works perfect, flawlessly. You put that scene in there, then there is some question is, are they still alive? The answer is no. David Chase even said that, you know, Tony Soprano has been dead. And again, I could do a whole video about that, but uh, theories about that. But, uh, you know, we'll just leave it at that. Um, but yeah, definitely check out The Many Saints in Newark. Um, Dune is another one coming out that I'd like to watch. I mean, I, I saw the David Lynch film and it was very weird, but I, I dug it, my dad, and I went to see it when I was about five or six and he, he didn't get it. Of course, you know, he doesn't know, he doesn't do David Lynch. He doesn't know what approach the director takes, whatever, but that's another movie that I'm looking forward to seeing because if it has half the budget at the old one. As the old one, it's going to be phenomenal. With the way they can do CGI nowadays, that movie could be done perfectly. Back when David Lynch did it in 83, he ran out of budget. It went, it went I think, through three different directors. <laughs> and there's a couple of scenes where there's painted drywall. You guys could tell. And again, I could do a whole nother video on that too. But yeah, Dune's the one to watch. It's getting rave reviews apparently. But it's going to be a two-part deal. So, that's that. But yeah, definitely check out Halloween Kills. Check out The Many Saints in Newark. And uh, check out Ghost Over on Discovery. And if you haven't watched Portals to Hell, I think you guys should jump on that bandwagon. But uh, nothing else to do. It's going to be a rainy day, so it's a good day to watch that stuff. GW, talk to you later.